Orange is certainly the color of the day here in Knoxville as Tennessee tangles with Texas and a pair of explosive scoring talents will collide this afternoon. Longhorn freshman Kevin Durant and volunteer sharpshooter Chris Lofton. These teams won thrillers this week. Monday night, Dane Bradshaw's tip in with 1.9 seconds left. Beat Oklahoma State in Nashville, 79 to 77. And on Wednesday, Texas was down one in the final moments when freshman guard Justin Mason drove all the way in and hit the go-ahead basket to ice the victory over Arkansas, 80 to 76. The balls and the Longhorns are rolling coming into this matchup right before Christmas. It's Holiday Hoops presented by Kay Jewelers. Texas 8-2, Tennessee 9-2 at Thompson Bowling Arena this afternoon. Happy holidays, everybody. Dave O'Brien alongside Jay Billis. Delighted you are joining us. And Jay, it's one of those December matchups between two very young but immensely talented teams. We could be talking about deep into the month of March. There's no question. They're going to be heard from in their leagues and into the NCAA tournament. But you're right, Dave. They're two teams that are good now but are getting better. Texas extraordinarily young, starting four freshmen, and Tennessee playing some freshmen as well, though they have a senior and two juniors in their lineup. Let's get right to the star watch and a couple of very explosive scoring talents. No question about it led by Kevin Durant the Texas Longhorn that can fall out of bed with 20 points and 10 rebounds and Chris Lofton from Tennessee the best shooter in the country is coach Bruce Pearl says he's the best contested shooter I say he's the best shooter period the lineups now Texas starting four freshmen and a sophomore that sophomore AJ Abrams averaging about 17 a game Tennessee has lost point guard Jordan Howell to a fractured hand in practice this week freshman Ramar Smith will run the offense Dane Bradshaw will also take the point for about 15 minutes or so. Hope you like orange. It's coming at you in waves today. <laughs> Great to have you along as you look at our officials and we are set for the opening tip here from Thompson Bowling Arena. And Tennessee wins that. And right out of the gate, Texas starting in man-to-man -man defense. And they are going to get spread out. This is a flex look. The flex offense that Bruce Pearl likes so much. They really run it wide and it is hard to guard. Here's Smith. High on the wing, knocks down the three from way downtown to get this crowd revved up. Well, that's exactly the kind of start that Tennessee wanted, and immediately they get into a press, but didn't really push up on Texas. It's going to be important for the young Longhorns to stay together, communicate, but most importantly, take care of the basketball. They cannot turn it over. James holding it high, now swings to Mason, who had the big basket this week. Down the stretch, got tied up. Augustine will fire and hit the three. Another very dangerous youngster for Texas. E.J. Augustine, the 5'11 freshman out of New Orleans. Well, a very good drive by Justin Mason. He hasn't had a bad game yet. A, a very polished freshman doing a great job and a terrific pass out to a shooter. Smith inside, great dish. No foul as James went in hard. The kick back out to Lofton. Great head fake. Got the shot. He can hit in his sleep and knocks down a three. Well, he's got such great credibility with that shot. When he makes a shot fake, all of a sudden people are flying by him, but he stays calm, stays in rhythm, and puts up a beautiful jump shot. What a great shooter. Now, last year, Tennessee went down to Austin and stunned Texas 95 to 78. Jay, they hit 12 three-point shots in that victory. They couldn't hope to do that again today, but they're off to a great start. And they forced an awful lot of turnovers. Remember, Daniel Gibson got hurt in that ball game, but they would have gotten blown out anyway. Durant will finish this one by stuffing down the miss. Tough matchup for Dane Bradshaw, the senior, at 6-4. A power forward at 6-4 to have to guard the 6-10 Kevin Durant. Now Durant is just a matchup nightmare for everybody. The freshman out of Sudland, Maryland. Many thought he'd be heading off to the NBA, but averaging 21 points, 9.4 rebounds, and of course because of that rule change, unable to play in the NBA. Smith and one. He'll go to the line. That's what Ramar Smith, the freshman, is so good at. That's getting into the lane. He's strong, he's physical, he's got a size advantage, and just backs down A.J. Abrams into the lane and shoots over him. And here's Lofton, the closeout coming to him. Two guys leave their feet, 
and all of a sudden one dribble to his left where he is at his best shooting the ball. When he's one dribble to the left, he's going to make it. Ramar Smith finishes up the three-point play back to Lofton now. He's averaging 27 points a game in Tennessee's five-game winning streak, and he's hitting 54% of his three-pointers during that run. Durant all the way in, trying to go off the glass. James with a follow and a miss. Ross Smith ahead of everybody will lay it up and in, and Tennessee's the team off to the quick start, 11-5. They lead by six. Well, Dave, in the playground, they might call that cherry picking. Bruce Pearl calls it two points for Tennessee. Absolutely. And exactly the start that Pearl had in mind. He feared Texas would be the team to run out quickly today because that's been their pattern. Well, anytime you can hit a shot and make Texas take it through the net to have to start their offense, that's what Tennessee wants to do. Bad shot by Kevin Durant. He can get that anytime. You've got to make Tennessee guard it. Smith will swing it off to the right. About 20,000 in the building today for the noon tip-off here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Great to have you along just before Christmas. Look how wide Tennessee runs this offense. Now they're getting into more of a set play, a little quick hitter. Run out ball screen and the roll. Very nicely done. Getting it down low to Cruz. Knocked away from him, and here comes Texas. The crowd itching for a foul there. There's a traveling violation on D.J. Augustine with 16.30 left here in the first half. The first turnover. Rick Barnes in his ninth year at Texas. His team fell one victory short of the Final Four last spring when they lost to LSU in the Elite Eight. Otherwise, it would have been Barnes' second Final Four appearance in three years. He's really built a monster program at Texas. And everybody considers that a football school, but after football season's over, it's one of the best basketball schools in America. Bradshaw scrapping for it. Had it taken away by Durant. So Tennessee turns it over. A lead of 11 of 5 for the Volunteers. Durant kind of bowl his way through. Got blocked and fouled by Childress. Ryan Childress, the sophomore out of Cincinnati. And there's Bruce Pearl in his second year at Tennessee. And now comes the hard part for him after that terrific run they had last year into the NCAA tournament and a scintillating season. It's keeping the program at this level. And he'll do that. He, he's a great recruiter, and I'm not sure there are many coaches out there that are more energetic than Bruce Pearl. He, he came in here and really energized this Tennessee program, gave them the belief that they could and would win, and recruited on top of that. So I, I think there are great things to come for this Tennessee program. In fact, won the SEC East last season. Texas with the ball here. Pearl asking for another turnover. Into the corner, it's Abrams. Off the back iron. Childress really battling for the rebound. Tipped it to Bradshaw. And the Volunteers on the attack now. Bradshaw certainly with the ability to handle the ball as he flips it up and left it short. The 6'4 senior who also plays an undersized power forward. He'll be running the point a lot today. Mason all the way through. Again, the crowd wanted a walking violation. Did not get it. And we have a timeout on the court with 15.34 left here in the first half. Tennessee leading Texas in a battle of two very gifted teams. Tennessee with the early lead over Texas as we say happy holidays here from Thompson Bowling Arena. Dane Bradshaw demanding the ball in the paint moments ago. Although had a tough time getting a handle on this pass. Well, one, one of the cardinal rules of basketball is pass away from the defense and get a good passing angle. You see Childress screens Hal into the low post. Now, Hal's got his guy on his back, but he's going to be on the high side. Childress needs to get down here and get a good passing angle into the post. Instead, he throws it to Bradshaw, but not away from the defense. He could have led him into a layup. Instead, he led him into a turnover. That's Childress's turnover, not Bradshaw's. Bradshaw returned to practice on Wednesday. He was experiencing a lot of soreness in both shoulders for several weeks. It was a bit of a mystery for Tennessee and the staff. He had an MRI that revealed a contusion on his right shoulder and some biceps tendonitis. So he's been playing with a lot of aches and pains. Boy, he has been playing with pain. What a tough kid. I mean, he leads their team in assists, does everything for him. They call him a glue guy, and he really is that for this Tennessee team. 2-3 zone now for Texas. They don't want to have to chase that flex all over the floor. They want to stay home a little bit more and make Tennessee prove it over the top. They bring in a freshman Tennessee does Josh Tab who wears number 25. He has it on the wing here. Shot clock is down to 12. One of the problems when you face a zone, Dave, especially a young team, they tend to stand around. Don't get as much movement. You really have to move against the zone. Shot clock at four. Long one by Smith and off the front rim. Well beyond the three-point line for an NBA shooter. 
Texas is not going to wait around. Here comes Abrams with a long one. James tipped the rebound, but controlled by Childress. The Volunteers have it. And it's been just about four minutes since Texas last scored a basket. I'll tell you, Tennessee is not a big team, but they're a pretty decent rebounding team because they go after the ball. They don't really box out that well, but they really pursue the basketball, and that's half the battle in rebounding, Michael. They got a lot smaller after dismissing a big guy, 6'10", Major Wingate from the team. Mason handling the ball out high here for Texas. Shot clock at 11. Long three-pointer, and that one is going to be knocked down by number 32, Connor Ashley. He's 6'9", but has that kind of shooting range. Jawan Smith pulls up and misses from long range, and all of a sudden, Tennessee has gotten very cold. Augustine fouled on his way to the basket. And D.J. Augustine, the freshman out of New Orleans, will be shooting. Boy, bad shot by Jawan Smith on the other side of the floor. And that bad shot was the first pass in Texas's fast break. Two guys running at him. No need to put up that shot. That's shot fake and drive it. And a very nice pass to D.J. Augustine, who I think has been the best freshman point guard in America thus far in the season. He has been magnificent. DJ stands for Darrell Jr., just as A.J. Abrams is Adrian Jr. But Augustine and McDonald's and Parade All-American from New Orleans. But his family was forced to leave their home due to Hurricane Katrina in August of 05 and relocate to the Houston area so he could finish out his high school career. He did wind up with his diploma from Brother Martin High School in New Orleans. And there are some who thought that had they stayed in New Orleans and had Katrina not hit, he would have wound up at LSU. And going to Texas, of course, he handed 25 points to LSU in the Longhorns' victory over the Bayou Bengals. Texas with losses to Michigan State by two and Gonzaga by 10. But they have bounced back from that loss with that overtime win over ninth-ranked LSU, and they shook off a tough Arkansas squad this week, 80-76. Difficult shot by Lofton fading away. And can't get it to go, and nothing is falling right now for the Volunteers after their very quick start. But everything is falling down now all of a sudden for the Longhorns. Lewis makes the basket. It's an 8-0 run for Texas. Well, that, that's a, a scouting report mistake by the players on the floor. You've got to know where Lewis is because that's what he does. He shoots it, and that is it. You have to find him, make him put it on the floor. Well, Holiday Hoops presented by K Jewelers continues this afternoon on ESPN and ESPN2. Following our game here on ESPN at 2 Eastern, it's Miami taking on Louisville. And then at 4.30 Eastern on ESPN2, Bob Knight tries to tie Dean Smith's record for career victories as Texas Tech will host Bucknell. That game also available in high definition. Well, there will be a lot of smiles on people's faces when Bob Knight ties that record if he's able to get it today. But none bigger than Dean Smith. I think he genuinely is happy for for Bob Knight. I was with him on Tuesday and what, what a wonderful gentleman and the ambassador for the game Dean Smith is. Actually tied up and he gets fouled on the paint as we look at the next three for Bob Knight on the brink of history. UNLV on December 28th. Looks like that will be the one to break the record. Yeah, if they're able to beat Bucknell, that, neither one of those games are gimmies because Bucknell, a very solid team, even though their record isn't as good as it's been over the past couple of years. I mean, Chris McNaughton, they, they've got a good, solid basketball team that's capable of winning the rubber. Actually, the sophomore out of Clear Lake, Texas. who has started a number of games for Rick Barnes, who will only go about seven or eight deep. And Tennessee will check Duke Cruz back in, the 6'7 freshman. And now Durant, who's been on the bench for the last several moments, well, Texas has made this run to take the lead. He will return to action as well. Connor Ashley is really becoming an important player for this Texas team. He's six foot nine. He's got long arms. He's the second leading shot blocker. And Rick Barnes has really adjusted his expectations with regard to Ashley. Have to remind himself that he's still just a sophomore. And he wants to get his confidence up because he's such a good talent, such a good player. He's told him, hey, you can miss 500 in a row. I want you to keep shooting. That's how much I believe in you. And over the last three or four games, Ashley has really responded positively. Well, the last time Tennessee made a basket, it was 17.42 on the clock. So they have indeed gone stone cold so far, and they continue to be a little bit sloppy. I Texas was on top by three. I was open. You were open, Jay. You had it. Ready to line up a long one. And 
Bruce Pearl trying to get his team fired up as they were in the first three or four minutes. They came shooting out of the game. You know what one of the problems has been for Tennessee, Dave, is quick and bad shots. And, and that's a function sometimes of young players and a little over exuberance. But they want to play fast, but you don't want to you want to make the other team guard you. In and out, Damian James can't believe he missed it. It was inside the cylinder and kicked back out. Smith all the way through gets hammered on his way to the basket. He'll shoot two. Lamar Smith, the freshman out of Mark Clemens, Michigan, and a top recruit for Tennessee. Averaged 23 points, six assists, and six rebounds a game in Detroit at Martin Luther King High School. He'll be going to the line to shoot two. Smith, one of the guys that is most affected by Jordan Howell not being available. And really a lot of guys are being affected because they've been asked to switch positions and play additional minutes at a position they're not used to playing thus far in the season. But Smith started at the point early and then Hal came in more as a steadying influence and Smith more of a combo guard that's had to play the point still learning his way around. Hal not one of those point guards who's going to score 20 points a night or dish out 10 or 12 assists not a superstar kind of a point guard but a calming influence out there and as you say just never turned it over. Well he's one of those guys like a doctor has to take the Hippocratic oath you know do no harm. Right. That's the kind of point guard is he comes in he does no harm and, and he helps you limit mistakes. Bradshaw fouled on a hand check as he started his move into the paint 12 26 left here in the first half. One of the things Tennessee is so good at is playing in a chaotic game. And missed free throws. There's nothing more chaotic than that great pass. The Cruz goes up strong but can't get it to go. Right underneath the basket and missed it. And tied up on the floor here with the score 14 11 Texas. And Duke Cruz has not missed many of those lately. Coming off a, a really solid game against Oklahoma State where he had 17 points and nine rebounds. Well, this team, look, they're going four across underneath. They really look to score an out-of-bounds play. That's kind of like special teams in football. Bradshaw again finding Cruz tough catch in the paint. Kicks it out to Smith. Often certainly has cooled as well for the Volunteers. Looking in the zone now, 2-3. They may try to go back to man late in the clock. Lofton with the catch and shoot. Short again, followed his own miss and tipped it out of bounds. It'll go over to Texas. Texas a little bit fortunate on that rebound. Everybody kind of stood around for the Longhorns waiting for the ball to come to them and Tennessee was the one chasing after it. And look at that scoring drought of nearly six minutes and they've gone 0 for 7 from the field. And Tennessee has quieted their own crowd which was raring to go in the opening moments. I've watched Tennessee play a fair amount this year and this is the longest stretch I can recall them going without scoring. Their, their team scores pretty efficiently. Abrams up top to Augustine. One of the four freshman starters inside Durant. Look at that move on the reverse. Boy, and he's really doing a better job of posting up. Played more on the perimeter start, but now he's getting down into the paint where he's a, a vicious matchup problem. They have to say this about Juwan Smith. He is trying to get something going for Tennessee, but Durant, an absolute nightmare to match up with. Kevin Durant. The star freshman out of Suitland, Maryland, averaging 21 points and nine rebounds a game. One of the best in the country. Texas with the five point lead with 1137 to play in the first half from Tennessee. 16 11 to score. Christmas night, December 25th at 830 Eastern. It's the Jets and the Dolphins from Miami. They are one of the surprise NFL stories of 2006. Chad Pennington and the New York Jets still in the AFC playoff chase. They visit Jason Taylor and the Miami Dolphins on Christmas night at 8.30 Eastern on ESPN's Monday Night Football. Well, it's a game with still a little something on the line, but the Jets certainly need help right there with Jacksonville at 8-6, and 5-5 five and five inside the conference. Now Tennessee in a scoring drought right now putting the ball in the hands of Jawan Smith trying to get something started but was that a foul. Well here's why officiating so difficult this is called the plane of verticality when Smith goes in you can see that Damian James goes straight up he's entitled to that space. And Smith was the one that went into him now now. James is entitled to the space from his feet as long as he goes straight up all the way up to the ceiling. And but that's a very difficult call to make. I just don't think that was a foul. 
because he didn't bring his arms down. He went straight up, and the contact was made by the offense against the defense. But, but again, you know, that was a great play by Tennessee to drive the ball and force that foul. I just don't think it was a foul. So a little early gift there for Jawan Smith, perhaps who turns 21 years old on Christmas Eve. By the way, not the only one. An early happy birthday to you, oh, Jay Billy. Not okay. 21. I'd rather be 21. <laughs> James quickly, nice dish underneath and a fast basket as Pittman knocks it down and takes the foul as well. That was the 55 defense, full court pressure by Tennessee, where they put a man on the ball, meaning they really want to speed you up. You know, pressure can slow you down or it can speed you up, and they want to speed up this younger lineup that's out on the floor and Dexter Pittman who was what, 300 some pounds in high school and has gotten down to 290 but he really motored down the floor. So 11 29 remaining here in the first half Tennessee can't save it so Texas will have the basketball and Pittman could be a big presence here against Bruce Pearl's team as we get deeper into the contest Tennessee with the steal Lofton in the offensive zone. Boy, what a great job by Cruz. That's like a press for Tennessee. They put a five man on the ball. It's tough to even get it in. Wash Smith wide open for the three. Look at James sailing in for two. Well, how about that pass? And Durant passing ahead, having that presence as a freshman. This, this is a, a team that's getting better and better. Tennessee looking for a go to guy to pick up what has become a sluggish offense. Jawan Smith kicks it out. Lofton trying to get a little bit closer. He's been doing a lot more of that. Smith to round it out. Jawan Smith can't get it. And Texas on a 15 2 run jet. They're taking a lot of contested jump shots from deep, which I think they can get any time. And Tennessee going back inside. Uh, Texas back inside to Pittman. He pins it right up against that backboard and the rim. Possession arrow will keep it on this end. Does the rim get a block shot on that? <laughs> it should. <laughs> Boy, that's some kind of strength. To be able to stick it right in there. I'll take another look. Well, he is getting better and better, Dexter Pittman. He's going to be a terrific player. He missed that first one, just he lost control of it and tried to go up and dunk it and just couldn't get that elevation he needed. Great feet, terrific hands, a soft touch. He's got a really good jump hook that's developing. He's going to play more and more. Durant. 6'9, 6'10. Look at that move sweeping in. Great touch inside and outside. Well, how's Juwan Smith going to stop that at 6'2? That's, that's next to impossible. I wouldn't give much of a chance to a 6'8 guy to stop that. Ramar Smith fouled back to that move by Durant. Look where he catches it this far off the lane. You don't usually see a big man get the ball that far off the lane because coaches don't want him to have it there. They'll turn it over. But you can give the ball to Durant. He can make a back to the basket move or he can face up shoot it or put it on the deck. Smith making the first. A.J. Abrams picked up his second foul so he will exit and sit next to Barnes here. And Justin Mason another freshman out of Amarillo Texas. Reports in for the Longhorns. Okay, when you talk about Kevin Durant and his talent level, I'm not just talking about as a player, but from the talent level and what he's capable of doing and how much better he can get, I'm not sure outside of Greg Oden there's a better prospect in college than Kevin Durant. Tennessee pressing. But Texas is the kind of team that doesn't mind that, although James nearly turned it over. The crowd again screaming for a walking violation and did not get it. Well, that probably was a walk, but a good idea by Texas to go over the top. They're getting in a 1 4 alignment and they're finding it difficult to get the ball in. James, there's Durant again from close range. Fights for the rebound. Did not come up with it. Here comes Lofton. Trying to do it himself all the way through. He's hammered to the deck. Went down hard as he's fouled by Mason with 10.05 left in the first half. That's one thing that Chris Lofton has really improved at. That's getting to the free throw line. Last year he shot only 60 free throws, but this year he's been more resolute than putting the ball on the deck. Everybody knows he is a great shooter. He can shoot it from the perimeter, but also he can put the ball down and force teams into fouling him where he's an outstanding free throw shooter and he becomes more of a weapon. Not just that shot, but the drive as well. Tennessee even though they make the foul shot here still without a field goal since the 1742 mark look at those foul shot attempts already up to 47 coming into today's game 60 all of last year here comes the big haired guy Matt Hill the freshman out of Lincoln Nebraska the big has made him quite a hit on the campus of Texas 
dangerous pass. Smith nearly stole it, but Augustine breaks it. Racing out high for the Longhorns. Pretty good patience by Texas. A lot of times when a young team gets sped up like that, bringing the ball down, they're going to take a quick and often bad shot. But Texas showing some maturity, making Tennessee guard him. Now the switch. Mason working on Cruz. Here's James from the wing, and it's around and out. Tennessee to run, pushing a little bit of tempo here. Lamar Smith with the kick. Here's the long one by Lofton. He's still cold, and Hill will cradle the rebound for Texas. Well, Texas got lucky leaving him open like that. Durant, look at him run the floor and slam it down. You, you, Dave, you have to think mm. Kevin Garnett when you see him. <laughs> not, maybe not quite as athletic, but just as skilled. And boy, when he, when he gets that 7-5 wingspan and lifts that ball in the air, it looks like he's going to hit the top of the backboard before it gets to the rim. He's going to back his way down, but steps on the line and turns it over. Durant in the open court. He is just a terror. Boy, a wonderful outlet pass by Hill, and then Durant running the lane with the great finish and give great credit to D.J. Augustine for giving the ball up at the right time. Augustine averaging about six assists per game. Now you mentioned Kevin Garnett. Durant would be playing with him in the NBA, but the league now prohibits young men from entering the draft with until one year left, uh, one year out of high school. They must also turn 19 by the end of the calendar year that they wish to be drafted in. Tennessee forcing the turnover. That's where Durant has to hold his defender off. That was not Augustine's fault. It was Durant's fault. Bradshaw out to Jawan Smith and gets it to go. And finally a three-pointer. And they hit their first field goal since it was 17-42 on the clock. Nine minutes and 25 seconds that field goal drought. Smith with a hand check foul trying to slow down Augustine. Inside Thompson Bowling Arena on a Saturday afternoon here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Dave O'Brien and Jay Billis with you, and we say happy holidays. We expect this one to go right down to the final moments to very, very gifted teams, very young teams in Texas and Tennessee. Texas, very explosive on the offensive end, facing a team that is going to try to press them for most of the 40 minutes, see if they can turn them over, get some easy baskets. Tennessee on the season forcing about 22 turnovers a game from their opponents, but Texas does not turn it over very much. Durant tiptoeing to stay in. Mason, great fake to get free and knocks down the three-pointer. Well, I can't tell you how impressed I've been in the times I've watched Justin Mason play. He's a tough kid. He wasn't highly rated coming out of high school, but Bob Knight told Rick Barnes when he landed him, you don't know how good of a player you've got. That kid is a steal, and it's, it's turning out to be right. Childers will fire long range, a rather ugly-looking shot. Augustine up ahead to Durant. Watch him work. He spins and he's fouled. Kevin Durant to go to the line here with 7.45 left in the first half. And Texas opening up a seven-point lead against a cold shooting Tennessee volunteer squad. Texas on top of Tennessee, 27 to 20. It's a happy holidays message from us, brought to you by K Jewelers. We take a look at today's Inside the Play, brought to you by Infinity. Yeah, we've talked about Kevin Durant, his versatility. Watch him post off the lane. Most big guys want to get the ball on the lane, down on the block. But with Durant, you can post him up two, three steps off. Now, look where he catches it right here. Now he's going to, with one dribble and a pivot, he's going to get his shot right here against a smaller defender. He can turn and shoot over because Juwan Smith is smaller, but just backs him down, that pivot, the long stride, and all of a sudden, that's a high percentage shot when you give it to him three steps off the lane. And you wouldn't do that with most big guys. You wouldn't give it to Dexter Pittman off the lane or Duke Cruz off the lane, as good as those players are. But Durant is a special talent. Leading the team in scoring, rebounding, and block shots. And also 40% from the three point line at his size and that 6'9, 6'10 body. And now with nine points and four rebounds. 
one of his high school coaches did a great thing with him. Did mostly drill work and wouldn't allow a lot of five on five during the summertime for, for Durant. He wanted him to learn how to play and improve his skill level, not just play pickup games and develop bad habits. A tough move inside by Wayne Chisholm. He's a freshman as well at 6'9, played with Willie Kemp. He's one of the terrific guards that we have seen in the early part of the season. And he's going to be a really good one if he learns how to play. Well, it seems like everybody that Bruce Pearl puts on Durant is a a real matchup nightmare. Durant tried the long distance shot, Mr. Chibbles battling for the rebound. And Tennessee will have the ball here with 17, a 7 14 left here in the first half. And desperate to get somebody to put the ball in the basket here in the last seven minutes of this half. Well, they've been facing some changing defenses. The two three zones here. It looks like one three one here with Durant up top on the top of the zone to get some length to bother some shooters. Smith thought about that long distance three, did not take it. Shot clock at 15. Jones looking inside. No one moving inside that paint at all for Tennessee. This is exactly what Rick Barnes wanted for this team to stay in offensively, and that's what they're doing. They're not moving. Shot clock at two. Smith has to hurry it up there off the back iron. Texas really crashing the glass, but because they have three men around the ball, they lose it. No one could get a clean handle on it. Yeah, that's the kind of thing a coach can live with because all three of his guys were really going after it. I think Rick Barnes would want his guys to communicate on that a little bit more, but you can't fault that kind of effort in going after the ball, especially when you're playing a zone and rebounding is such a big issue. Juwan Smith taking a seat, three out of seven from the field, but Tennessee is just six for 21 shooting it here in the first half. Chisholm deep from the corner. Just glanced off the rim and with six and a half minutes to play in the first half, Texas looks like a team firmly in command up 29 to 22. Up Tennessee missed Duke Cruz wide open inside there. The rim was one four set, popped out, and then the quick duck in, and he was open. Mason guarded by Bradshaw. Really looking for Durant time and time again. And he's a face man. That's the play there. Moved around his man and knocked it down with that quick step to his right. When Josh Cab was guarding him a little bit earlier, he just shot from the perimeter when he should have gone inside. There you can face up a big guy and go around him. Just another rather ugly looking shot. Lofton will keep it alive. Another effort here. He'll fire the three and get it. That's like a layup for him. It's amazing. Got a defender right in his face. For most guys, that's a bad shot. For him, it's like a layup. Mason got a great look at it and bottomed it out from way downtown. Great job by D.J. Augustine. Cruz back out to Lofton. Justin Mason really did a nice job of staying down there. Wild shot by Cruz on the move. 34-25, Texas trying to open up that lead. Some Warriors. Mason again. Got another one. And he is fired up for the Longhorns. And Tennessee needs a timeout. Texas with their biggest lead of the day, 37 to 25 at Tennessee. Well, Jay Billis, Texas really starting to heat up. Well, Justin Mason has played a terrific ball game thus far. We talked about earlier, Dave, that he hadn't had a bad ball game all year. And you can tick this one off as well. He hadn't had a bad one here. He's been terrific. Mason earning his first college start November 21st against Nichols State and it marked the first time in Texas history four true freshmen had started in the same game and have been doing it ever since. Well it's amazing to start four freshmen and be as good and as solid as Texas has been at eight and two. I mean they don't have halftime they have nap time. <laughs> A nice win over LSU, the number nine ranked team in overtime. They shook off Arkansas this week. Arkansas with a gritty effort. Bradshaw drives the lane. His leader won't go following his own miss. Tennessee gets another crack at it. Lofton with Durant coming out to guard him. Well, Texas is in a 3 2 zone with Durant out top. He 3 2, 1 2 2, whatever you want to call it. It's the same alignment. And with Durant and his length, he's got to get his hands up, though. He's got his arms down to his side where he's much smaller. Tab on the baseline, lost the handle on it, turns it over. And the Longhorns on the attack here, coming up on four and a half minutes to play in the opening half from Thompson Bowling Arena in Knoxville. Got a drive, Children's Day. Durant 
Scoops it up there. He draws the contact, and he'll go to the line. You can see Ryan Childress trying to take away the right hand, but still with the crossover, able to get to it. There's no way. Childress is a good player and a solid defender, but he's not going to be able to guard Durant. So Durant to shoot here. Texas coming in 8-2 overall. One of only three schools to advance to the Sweet 16 in four of the last five NCAA tournaments. Duke and UConn are the others. And they have reloaded despite losing all five starters from last year's team that won 30 games. Well, that was a very good team. P.J. Tucker left early to go into the NBA draft, as did Daniel Gibson, Lamarcus Aldridge. Those were big losses. And when, when the season ended and school ended, Rick Barnes had four players on his roster. Four. He can't even have a pickup game. Yeah, he's got to have two on two pickup games. Durant will step out. 39 to 25. Durant with 14 points as he is leading all scorers. A, a very easy looking 14. Nothing's easy in this game, but he makes it look easy. Smith got it to go. A rare three pointer to fall for Tennessee, although they were falling fast and furious in the opening moments. Good job there by J.D. Lewis coming up and being a receiver when Texas was having a tough time getting the ball in. Games. See Texas six out of ten from beyond that three point line. Augustine on the drive. So quick contact. Flipped it up and it's going to go down for him. Amazing that that eventually did. After tapping the rim two three times fall through the cylinder. And we have a timeout 41 to 28 Texas. Augustine on the move. A circus shot and he'll be at the line when we come back after getting the roll. Well, we are getting closer and closer to the break. 349 left. Tennessee trailing 41 to 28. Chris Pearl's team has been forcing a lot of turnovers, Jay. 22 on average, but only three today. Yeah, that's the difference in the game right now, Dave, is that Tennessee has been unable to turn over this young Texas team. But remember, Texas only had eight turnovers against Arkansas. They only had nine against LSU, and they only had 10 against Michigan State. So this is not a team that has been turning it over at an alarming rate. In fact, most of their turnovers have come against some of the, the lower division teams they've played where they've blown them out. Augustine finishing up that circus three point play. He has all three of those turnovers for Texas, oddly enough, but he also has seven assists, so yeah. he's done a great job dishing the ball. He's had the ball in his hands more than anybody, and you're going to have some more turnovers, but his assist to turnover ratio, two to one. Ratchet got position on the entry pass and knocks it down. Now remember, Tennessee started by hitting four of their first five shots. They have gone five for 23 since then after the make by Bradshaw. So you could say they're lucky to be down by just a dozen. Augustine working off the ball. They had Mason take it out front so Augustine could go down low, come off some screens. Mason asking for some help into the hands of Augustine. He falls off the play for Texas. Shot clock is down to five. Augustine on the drive will pull up a long range three. Way short. The rebound right to Bradshaw. Inside the paint, flipped it up. Cruz went for the rebound and missed it. Texas has it again. Here's where you want to be smart. Oh, how about that pass? He threaded it in beautifully. Texas cannot convert. Mason knocked to the floor. He was asking for a foul and did not get it. Lamar Smith rejected by James. Right back to Lofton. His three is up and over the top of that backboard. But people ask sometimes, why do guys now try to block shots out of bounds? Sometimes it can be a better play to block it out of bounds and not keep it in play because James just blocked it out to maybe the best three-point shooter in America. Not maybe, in my opinion, he is the best three-point shooter. So right here, he just about threw a perfect pass out to Chris Lofton, who had a wide-open three as a result of it. And stunningly enough, he missed it. Augustine to inbound. Stolen away by Tennessee. Tab got a hand on it. The dish into the paint. Tennessee trying to convert. Can't do it. Long or short, they're just not falling for the Volunteers. Augustine all the way through for two. Well, they are really exploiting Tennessee in transition defense. Tennessee has not been getting back. It's Mason with the rejection. Kept that one in bounds, and this will work out for Texas. And the Longhorns have it here, coming up on the two-minute mark and opening up a 14-point lead. 
Tennessee is about to get half a hundred hung on him in the first half. And Texas averaging 84 points a game, but Tennessee is averaging 81. Two high scoring teams coming in. Here's Lewis from the corner. He gets it, a three pointer, and it's the biggest lead of the day for the Longhorns. Dave, I did not anticipate this kind of maturity being shown by this young Texas team. They have been unbelievably mature with the way they've run their offense. They stayed patient, and they haven't turned it over. Texas with the timeout. Wayne Chisholm with the quick strike for the Volunteers. Look at the balance on the court for Texas. Well, Texas gets out quickly after this miss. Quick outlet. You can see the ball. Everybody is jogging down for Tennessee. And Augustine sprinted down the floor. And that's that's a problem. You can see Jordan Howell at the top, even with his broken hand, is holding his arms out saying, what is this? And I'm sure Bruce Pearl was saying it a little more emphatically in the huddle. You got to get back. You can't allow those kind of easy baskets. And the Longhorns, conversely, getting great balance on their end and really finding the open man time and time again in transition. Well, ESPN's bowl road trip continues today with two more bowl games. Coverage kicking off with the bowl breakdown special at 4 and then at 4.30. New Mexico takes on San Jose State. They drastically turn things around this season to make the team's first bowl game since 1990. And then at 8 Eastern, two high-powered offenses take the field. It's Tulsa against Utah. The New Mexico Bowl and the Bell Helicopter Armed Forces Bowl also available on ESPN HD and ESPN Radio. We would have thought that Texas would score 47 in this first half with A.J. Abrams having a bagel. Durant, who can shoot from beyond that arc, will back his man down as he's doing against Chisholm here. Didn't get the roll on the jump shot. And Tennessee trying to pick up the tempo here. Hard foul as Mason went in and slammed Chisholm to the deck. And Chisholm very, very slow to rise, still on his back here with a minute nine left in the first half. And a crowd all over Justin Mason. Chisholm is finally up, but he's seeing stars. Well, the crowd can get all over him if he wants to. That was just a hard foul and nothing more. He went for the ball. Mm -hmm. There was contact up there, and that's it. There was nothing intentional there. That's hard basketball. Chisholm apparently okay. He'll go to the line to shoot here. 47-32 Texas. One of the things, Dave, when, when you go to the basket and, and show your jersey to the opposing team instead of squaring up and showing your jersey to the backboard, squaring up to the backboard, you expose yourself to get hurt a little bit. Now, he did get fouled, but watch how, watch how Chisholm opens up here. See how he's open? If he would have squared his shoulders to the basket and gone in left shoulder first, he not only would have protected himself better, but he would have had a chance to finish that play and get a three-point play instead of just two free throws. Mason gets one. It was the second foul on Mason. And Tab commits the foul with a minute eight left. As he fouled Mason there, 47 to 33. And substitution back into the game. It'll bring Jawan Smith for Tennessee. This is an important minute eight for Texas. If they can knock down these free throws, they cannot allow Tennessee to come down and get three-point shots and cut into this lead. That one will roll in for Mason. He averaged 25 points a game as a senior in high school at Amarillo in Texas. Ray Pearl really working the officiating crew here. Real hard in the last minute. He's saying that Durant touched the rim or touched the net when the ball was up there, and as a result, that shouldn't have counted. I mean, somebody grabbed it. I thought Dane Bradshaw got a got a piece of the net, but it was hard to tell. Going back to the 2-3 zone. Now Durant is down low, and they've got the smaller guys, Lewis and Augustine, up top. Bradshaw at the foul line. Lamar Smith sweeping through for two. Pretty good job by Chisholm there to screen off Kevin Durant. Tennessee pressing again. Augustine, the white man to have the ball for the Longhorns. 45 seconds left in the half. And a very impressive first 20 minutes for the young Texas Longhorn team. We've seen a real maturity, a real grow-up performance here. 
they, they've been, they haven't allowed themselves to get speeded up in the ball game. They've been strong with the ball, and they haven't turned it over, and they've got good shots. What they've done, Dave, is they've made Tennessee guard them. And when you don't cough the ball up against the press, I think Tennessee is vulnerable if you make a couple passes. They're not a great half-court defensive team. They're the type of team that wants to get you in a chaotic game and turn you over that way. The foul on Wayne Chisholm of Tennessee and the crowd all over the referees here. As is Bruce Pearl. He doesn't like a succession of calls as James misses the front end. Chisholm, in fact, asking for clarification on the last foul. He has to take a seat. Duke Cruz comes back in for the Volunteers with 27 seconds left in the half. And James gets the second end. 50 to 35. The full court pressure right now by Texas just to slow Tennessee down, make him take up some extra time. And they better get it across the, across the half court line. Texas shooting 52% in the first half, and they've made 7 out of 12 beyond the three point arc. Here's where you got to pay close attention to Lofton. Bradshaw will shoot it instead. Not there for him, and a rebound tipped at the buzzer. That's how the first half ends with Texas on top, 50 to 35. The Longhorns shooting the ball very well, and Tennessee used to turning people over, not doing it today very often, only four times, and Texas on its way to 100. Time for us to toss it to the studio as Scott Reese with the K Jewelers halftime report. We'll have the second half coming up from Knoxville. Texas leading by 15. It's the greatest time of year, and it's here. Help me celebrate it with everybody here. Friends so dear. The young Longhorns of Rick Barnes showing just how explosive they can be leading at halftime already with 50 to Tennessee's 35. Dave O'Brien and Jay Billis with you and Jay inside Thompson Bowling Arena. The talk of the place is not a volunteer or the game itself. It's about Kevin Durant. Well, Kevin Durant and then the young players for Texas that have handled this pressure so well. I mean, they go in at halftime. They have a short nap, milk and cookies, you know, <laughs> hope that nobody eats the glue during free right, play. Of course. And then come out in the second half. If they can limit themselves to four turnovers again in the second half, I mean, we've got an extraordinary performance by this team. And Kevin Durant, you're right, was the one that led the way, though. 14 points in that first half, 5 of 10 from the field. And he did it in a variety of different ways, showing he could put the ball on the floor with his left hand and get to the rim, then posting up and pivoting to get around a smaller defender. And then out in transition, the nice pass from D.J. Augustine, and then extending for the dunk. What an outstanding prospect. And you can see his 14 points, knocking down all four of his free throws. And Chris Lofton, the junior, best shooter in the country in my opinion that's had a defender in his face from tap until the buzzer in the first half and two out of eight so far Tennessee started so well making four of their first five that was inside the first five minutes and then went seven for 31 in the last 15 minutes of the half to trail by 15 Lofton with another miss make him two for nine now and Texas with the save James on the baseline doing a nice job to keep it in well, a little flare screen for Lofton they were trying to get him the ball and get him started on the first play of the second half. And he was able to shed off the screen, but just took it a little bit too far. That might have been a pull-up jumper to get him going instead of taking it all the way to the rim. A.J. Abrams, and you mentioned it, Jay. He's averaging 17 a game. He didn't score a point in the first half, and yet they have the 15-point lead. Here's Durant again. Count that basket. It's goaltending. Well, how about the patience there, Dave? Getting the ball inside to Durant. He gave it back up, reposted, and got it again. You see Texas shooting 52% in the first half. Made all those threes, 7 out of 12. A lot of foul shots taken. Not many turnovers. Combined, just eight. Bad news for Tennessee, though, because it's such a huge part of their defensive attack. Not just shutting you down, but making you turn it over. And Texas is doing a pretty good job in their man-to-man -man defense, handling this flex offense that's run so wide by Bruce Pearl. They're staying at home on that little baseline screen, making sure they don't get burned, and then they're recovering to the shooters in the corner. Durant picks up his second foul as Bradshaw will go to the line. We talked about all his aches and pains and the bad right shoulder that he is playing with. And the game-winning tip with 1.9 seconds left to beat Oklahoma State on Monday night. He's used to coming up with big shots. 
Well, Bruce Pearl, when he talks about Dane Bradshaw, gets a big smile on his face. He can guard any position. He's a great glue guy, and he really sets the tone for this team. And there's a terrific offensive rebound and stick back by Duke Cruz, and that means that they can set their press up, which they haven't done much of. And a violation, a five-second violation. Could not get it in. And so that press paying off immediately for Bruce Pearl. One of the things you have to do against the press is get the ball in quickly. Texas didn't do that. There, there's the pass we talked about in the first half. That's a great play. Real strength there, too, by Duke Cruz, who draws comparisons to the former Cincinnati star, Eric Hicks. And you see why, undersized at 6'7", but he is strong. Now, all of a sudden, the crowd back into the ball game. Exactly what the volunteers needed to get this house of about 20,000 involved again as they were in the first five minutes. Mason off the fake, drives in, can't get it to go. The tip won't fall. Tennessee showing some light. Smith lines up a three, and it's a round and out. Cruz with the rebound, right back up and in. Timeout, Texas. Listen to this place, Thompson Bowling Arena. A thunderous sound finally as Tennessee's on a run. It's a sea of orange on both sides today, Texas and Tennessee. Happy holidays from Knoxville, 18.03 left here in the second half. Dave, Tennessee runs a 1-4 play where they pop out Jawan Smith, and Duke Cruz is just going to jump into the lane for a quick duck in and seal his man, Damian James. Really well done. No pressure on the pass that allowed Smith to see in. And all of a sudden, Tennessee back in the game. And as you mentioned, the crowd certainly is too. Cruz has scored six straight points. Tennessee on a seven-zip run. They've cut the lead to 10. It was at 15 at halftime. And Tennessee's defensive intensity has really picked up. Abrams on the drive, tried to bank shot. Great follow there as Mason came sailing down the paint. No one picked him up. Here's Lofton's three. Trying to keep that crowd on a high, but it glanced off the rim. Well, he's taken some bad ones in this ball game, and I realize that Bruce Pearl needs him to do that from time to time because he is by a fair margin their best player, but that was a possession they needed something better. Durant into the paint, he got hit and foul. The crowd does not like the call. Lofton with the personal. And that's his first. And see Bruce Pearl, he has really done a great job with this program. Really injecting a lot of intensity. Getting these kids to believe they can win. And he brought in a really good recruiting class. Ranked it in the top 10 and very, very solid. You look at what he did last season. Increasing attendance by nearly 6,000 per game. First in the NCAA tournament. First bid since 2001. And the number six recruiting class in the country. They had some great wins last season, including two victories over eventual national champion Florida during the SEC schedule. Smith has it knocked right back out by James. Boy, he's so active defensively. Active, alert, and he's got great timing to get up and block those shots from the weak side. That really gives his teammates a lot of confidence to get out and guard because you got a 6-6 guy that can send one back if you make a mistake. Bradshaw to Smith, his three. James tips the rebound. He's got some Bill Russell in his game. You talked about every once in a while. It's not a bad idea to block it into the 15th row, but he does tend to keep it alive, too. And the crowd wanted another turnover there. Abrams. And a pushing foul by Lofton. He picks up another quick personal here. As they got tangled up in the paint, 55 to 42. And Lofton as his second foul. Anytime that Texas can reverse the ball from one side to the other, they can get a mismatch down into the post because Tennessee is much smaller. Another great inbounds job there by Rick Barnes in Texas for the quick strike. And just throwing it up and lobbing it into Kevin Durant, who has the wingspan of a guy that's you know, seven foot five inches tall. You can throw it up there, and he's going to go up and go get it over somebody. Durant with 19 points. He's made seven out of 12. Well, look at Durant guarding Dane Bradshaw. Looks like a kid playing against his dad in the driveway. 
dad's got some really, really long arms, doesn't he? he shuts down Bradshaw, but a great pass there to find Cruz on the baseline. And Duke Cruz has some good hands, and his hands were ready on that play. That's important for a big guy. Always have your hands ready to receive the ball. Another turnover. Texas kicks it away. Here comes Lofton with the bounce to Smith. He can't get the lay-in. But a foul underneath the basket as well with 16 minutes left. Boy, I don't get that call. Kevin Durant was just bigger. He didn't foul. But what a great play by Chris Lofton, the backflow defender, to knock that ball away and force the turnover. Number two on Durant. James will come out. Connor actually, let me check that. It's number three on Kevin Durant. So that could become an issue here in the next few minutes. Ryan Childress will put it in play here for Tennessee. Tad, quick move to his right. Here's Lofton open for three. Got it! A ten-point lead for Texas. Boy, you cannot leave him to help out on penetration. If they get a two, that's fine for your defense. You can't allow a three. Another turnover by Augustine. Traveling violation. Tennessee with the crowd screaming behind them has cut it back to 10. Lofton, when he sets his feet, the help late in getting there, and it's down. Well, that is the outstanding country singer Kenny Chesney, who is a regular here at Tennessee Games. You think of a regular at Fenway Park. He is a big, big baseball fan. We're in the Sox cap here, Tennessee. I'm not sure how you can get away with that. Also, a Tonight Show sweatshirt. Sure. I never watch. I'm always watching sports on. Yeah, show that off. Holiday Hoops continue. Presented by K Jewelers. We've got Miami and Louisville coming up at 2. And then Bucknell and Texas Tech. And Bobby Knight continuing to bear down on history, of course. And I know you and Coach Knight spent a lot of time together over the last several years in particular. And so many coaches around the country as Lofton misfires, follows his miss, can't get the lay-in, and actually collects the rebound. Contact, and that's going to be a foul against Ashley. That offensive foul swinging the elbows a little bit. And so many coaches around the country delighted by Coach Knight about to set the all-time record. Yeah, it's an amazing accomplishment from a career standpoint. And what it what it gives you Dave is I think an opportunity to celebrate a, a truly unique career and a career of substance. Cruz off the inbound got it to go actually didn't want to foul him after picking up the offensive foul moments ago and here come the volunteers. Boy, this is a real gut check now for Tennessee they've got to be strong with it and are not. And I have to take a timeout. With a thunderous roar backing up the balls here on their home court at Thompson Bowling Arena. To avoid the five second violation, having to take the time out there. So Texas burns one that Rick Barnes did not want to have to take. Well, he's telling his team they've got to be stronger in making cuts and getting open. But one thing that he may want to think about is getting somebody other than DJ Augustine to inbound the ball because Augustine is having a tough time seeing over the Tennessee defense. And it also takes a guy who is experienced at getting open away from being a receiver. Back to Coach Knight for a moment. And Rick Barnes, one of his great friends, Rick Barnes, who's had all sorts of success as well, taking his last 12 teams of the NCAA tournament. We caught up to Rick Barnes before this contest. He had his thoughts about Bobby Knight. I think he's real. I think he's a man's man. I think that he's willing to uh, tell the truth. I think that uh, he's uh, a, a person that people want to say not politically correct or whatever. I think the fact is he believes in telling the truth. And uh, I admire him. Uh, uh, I think I've been lucky to uh, have a chance to, to, to coach in the league with him. Uh, and I, I just admire him for, for uh, things other than basketball because the fact is not enough people probably speak their mind. And I'm mean, probably including myself oftentimes about that. Uh, but he's a guy that, uh, for whatever reason, uh, you know, uh, when he speaks, you want to listen. Well, Bobby Knight noted for a great defensive mind. Pretty good stop here for Tennessee as Lofton hauls in a rebound. And they deny the Longhorns again. Texas has become tentative. Now Tennessee the aggressor. Lofton got it. 
it'll be DJ Augustine for Texas. Looks like a cramp, but hard to tell from here. So Augustine will be attended to at a very impressive first half with seven assists, slow to rise and with some help. But the Texas lead has shrunk to five. Well, you can see here Chris Lofton, the nice step back dribble. And it looks like just a cramp for DJ Augustine. His leg just straightened up, which is one of the signs of a cramp, and he went down. He, he, he's having a hard time because that knee is or that uh, leg has uh, has tensed up so badly but it doesn't look like it's any worse than a cramp again we're not medical professionals but having played for a long time that's what it looks like so the freshman point guard will have to leave the court at least for now at a time where Texas desperately needs him because they're starting to turn it over and a volunteer defense has gotten real tough all of a sudden and Tennessee is on a 10 zip run. Texas just trying to get it in and they do takes your primary ball handler off the floor now AJ Abrams is going to have to handle it more as is Justin Mason Mason with it here a five point lead it was 15 at halftime and that one's going to get on by Abrams who did not score in the first half not a single point but buries the three pointer to quiet the crowd just a down the lane went for the stuff and James hit him and has also been teed up as well. James showing off some emotion there. And with 14 16 left, Tennessee is the team playing with all the life right now. And a technical foul against James on top of the initial foul. Well, James just showing a, uh, showing a little bit too much emotion. Chisholm coming down the lane. James trying to block it, caught him with the foul, and then reacted to it. And all right, that might have been a quick technical. I mean, it certainly, you can say it's justified, but. That was a quick show of emotion. He wasn't showing up the official. I think that was a little bit too much sensitivity by the referee. So this could be a huge swing for the volunteers as that one rattles in for Lofton. And now, now, yeah, now Chisholm will go to the line to shoot two. A technical foul on James. You know, those are the kind of plays, and, and it's all the fault of Damian James. You, you can't leave it up to the sensibilities of a referee as to whether the, the ref gets offended by what you do. Uh, I don't think it was worth a, a technical, but certainly understandable. And those are the kind of things that lose you games on the road. You can't make mistakes like that. That's a mental error. Chisholm with another one coming here, 60 to 54, Texas. And Lofton starting to get that hot hand again for the Volunteers. He is capable of scoring 20 and a half. Quick foul there on Smith as he fouled actually Juwan Smith with the personal in the rebound. That's number three. And you can see, Dave, why that was such an important technical foul. Texas could have gotten out of there with nothing. Chisholm missed them both, but you gave the best shooter in America a chance to shoot two free throws to cut that lead. Here's Abrams just hit the three moments ago. Gets another one. Well, you can see that his confidence went up as soon as he knew, hey, I'm the man here. I've got to get something done. With Kevin Durant out with some foul trouble, DJ Augustine over on the bench trying to get some liquids into him. A.J. Abrams has been the guy that stepped forward. And Tennessee concentrating on all those wonderful freshmen for Texas, but A.J. Abrams is the lone sophomore in that starting lineup. Abrams coming off the stagger reading the defense letting Smith try to go over the top and he just stepped back kind of faded to the corner just a tad to get some space and create that space and boy, he sets his feet quickly. So for the moment this big crowd here at Thompson Bowling Arena quieted at least somewhat by the threes from Abrams. It's Texas and Tennessee in a sea of orange here. Dave O'Brien and Jay Billis with it just before Christmas and great to have you along. What we expect this game to come right down to the wire. And Tennessee in the second half making seven out of 15. Not that Texas has really cooled off. But the Longhorns had a 15 point lead at the break. Yeah, that was beautiful. Smith trying to get in on the back door and he's fouled on the play with 1351 left. Smith went sailing into the crowd. Dave on an out of bounds sideline. You always have to watch the inbounds man. What they did jump out here and then set an immediate screen and they got lost on that back pick. I mean that is just way too easy 
for an inbounds to give up a layup on sideline out of bounds, and it's a sign of a young team. That's communication. You have to talk on that back screen and either switch it or bump the cutter and don't allow him to get unimpeded to the basket. The junior, Jawan Smith, out of Cleveland, Tennessee. Very nice surprise here for the Volunteers. He was a recruited walk-on under the previous administration. Came off the bench in a big way last year in the starting lineup this season and now has 15 points. Now he had his coming out party last year against Texas. He had 14 in that game and to come up with 15, especially when his team's been struggling offensively, it's been a solid performance. That was a vastly different game. Tennessee won in a blowout in Austin, 95 to 78, with a slew of three pointers. They have to come from behind today if they're going to knock off Texas. How about Justin Mason in the second half with DJ Augustine out? He's had to handle the ball. He's done a pretty good job. James pulls up and pops it around now. Lewis with a tough rebound in traffic. And another opportunity here for the Longhorns. Abrams able to stay in bounds. Well, does that show you don't need to be 6'10 to grab a rebound? Mason with the miss. Chisholm battling for the rebound. He's fouled by Mason. 63 to 56. And Durant rising up off the bench as if he wants to re enter, but he's going to stay seated for now. Mason picks up his third. And Chisholm will be at the line here. Wayne Chisholm, the freshman. He says he models his game after Tim Duncan. But when you when you talk about this young man, Kevin Durant, who does he remind you the most of playing professionally? Garnett. Yeah. I mean, it's not a, a, a direct comparison or a perfect comparison, but that's the guy he reminds me of most. And if not for the rule change in the NBA, he'd be playing in the NBA right now. 19 points for Durant. Just under his average. And Durant getting ready to report back in. All eyes on him in the first half. He's playing right now with three fouls. But here he comes. See, I modeled my game after Wilt Chamberlain. I played more like Richard Chamberlain. <laughs> Who could hit the three, by the way. <laughs> Slapped away by Chisholm, attacking on defense, and knocks it out of bounds to again fire up the crowd at Thompson Bowling. So Durant is on the court and Augustine has recovered as well from what we were told was a leg cramp and back in. Now going to go high pick and roll for Abrams and they're switching it. So you want to look to Durant if you can. Augustine. Looking for Durant, not open at the moment, actually hands it back to the point guard. Into the corner, shot clock at six. James dumps it inside, is Durant. No foul as he hits the deck. A clean block on the play. Jason, all the way down, lays it in. This is a three-point game. Tennessee down 15 and half. Trails by three. A 6 nothing run for the Volunteers. Durant for three. Not there for him. Childress with the save on the baseline. And the Volunteers can tie it with a three-pointer. Tennessee in the second half has gotten the chaotic pace that they want. Now they're going to make Texas guard them. Tennessee does not have Chris Lofton on the floor, but they do have a shooter in Bradshaw who can certainly hit it. So can Juwan Smith. Seven seconds left on the shot clock. Bradshaw off target on that effort. Pretty solid defensively by Texas. If Bradshaw is going to try to squeeze off a shot over Durant, Rick Barnes has to like his chances. Augustine spinning. Ashley pulls up his dribble. On the money from the corner, it's Augustine fully recovered from that leg injury. And Tennessee has got to sustain better effort on defense. They are really solid the first 10 seconds of the shot clock, but then they seem to let up a bit. Ron Smith off the front rim. What a rebound. Durant pulling it down. A six-point lead. And another. 
another three-pointer on the money by Abrams. And he's been the offense in the second half for Texas. They lead by nine. A.J. Abrams, who twice has hit six threes in a game, has buried three of them here in the second half. He is just unafraid out there. A guy who was mostly a pass first player last year that knocked down some threes this year really looking for his offense and if you're not right up on him he will really pull the trigger on you leads the team in steals really good speed and you can see Augustine nobody gets out to him no communication I mean that's just too easy for this Tennessee defense to give up a shot that wide open when they're trying to make a comeback they, Tennessee is expending a lot of energy in this second half trying to make a comeback and you wonder if they are able to get back where they make it a one possession game are they going to be spent emotionally when they get there they think about last year when Texas lost to Tennessee in Austin the volunteers attempted 24 threes they hit 12 of them well now it's Texas burying one after another 11 out of 18 beyond the arc now, this is a team that wants to get you into a fast paced game and they don't mind taking a quick shot if it's a good look because they can get open threes that are opportunistic when they're not really being guarded that hard and they can really get your head spinning on the defensive end after they drop a three and then you've got to get it inbounded quickly against their press and A.J. Abrams is the man knocking them down here in the second half he has attempted three threes he's made them all and Tennessee had crept to within three now they're down nine with 11 16 remaining in the second half. One thing Texas has to be very mindful of is boxing out and making sure they keep Tennessee from getting second chance opportunities because the balls have done a great job on the offensive glass. ESPN's bowl road trip continues today. Two more bowl games coverage kicking off with the bowl breakdown special at 4 Eastern and at 430 New Mexico takes on San Jose State. Then at 8 o'clock Eastern two high powered offenses take the field. It'll be Tulsa against Utah. The New Mexico Bowl and the Bell Helicopter Armed Forces Bowl. They're available on ESPN HD and ESPN Radio. Well, orange certainly the color of the day in this noontime tip off here at Thompson Bowling Arena in Knoxville, Tennessee. Texas with an 8 and 2 record coming in. Tennessee at 9 and 2. Oddly enough, and I don't think anyone would have guessed this as the season got underway. I mean, here we are so close to Christmas, and neither side is ranked. Although they've both spent time in the top 25 this season, that is bound to change. Yeah, I, shortly. I think it'll change. I mean, both teams have two losses and two losses to really good teams each. I mean, Tennessee lost to Butler, they lost to North Carolina. I think they're a much better team uh, now than they were uh, uh, over a month ago, as is Texas. So I, I do think they, they could both easily be ranked given the state of college basketball, how many teams are losing or going to lose games this month. But they will be ranked before the season's over, no question. And Texas in a little bit of foul difficulty here with a lot of time left, although they do lead by nine. And Tennessee with the ball here. Juwan Smith back up top to Lamar Smith. Going back to the 2 3 zone is Texas. Lofton's back in. Juwan Smith off the fake, takes it inside the paint. Tough back shot. And it's tipped up and in by Chisholm. There's the offensive class we talked about, Dave. You've got to get a body on somebody, even though it's zone, and Texas having a tough time getting it in again. Abrams to bring it across. We'll see if they guard him. No, they don't. But he misses this time. The first three pointer is missed in the second half. There was one of those random ball screens in transition by Ashley. Lofton wanted it. Can't get it to go off the back iron and a foul with 10.25 left of the game. James taking a tumble as he got knocked to the floor. The foul will go against Wayne Chisholm, the freshman. That's his third. They might need to get substitute officials in these games. These guys are going to get worn out going up and down the court like these teams are going. Doug Shows, Pat Adams, and J.B. Caldwell working hard today on this court. The Summits. And after the great women's coach here at Tennessee. Lewis out high for Texas trying to add on to a seven-point advantage. Durant. That's going to be a charge on Durant, and that's number four. The fourth foul on Kevin Durant. And a huge story here developing for Texas. Durant trying to put the ball on the floor and go by Wayne Chisholm. I don't know. Mm. You know, they may have called it with that left arm. There's no, I don't think the Cruz had position to get a charge, but he did pick that left arm up a bit. 
And if you're in any way pushing off, that's where the foul could be justified. But I'm not sure that Cruz, uh, excuse me, Chisholm maintained initial guarding position, which is the standard for a charge when the guy's on the move. So the best player on the court, and for long stretches today by leaps and bounds, Kevin Durant, the freshman, 19 points, has to take to the bench. Tennessee trailing by seven. Lofton trying to get it inside. It's Cruz jumping. The hook shot won't roll in. Well, he's had some bad luck today. And a foul to go against the Volunteers as well with 9.45 remaining. You know, Tennessee does a good job in their offensive board coverage of, of keeping their hands up and making contact with the body. And they got caught doing it there. But it's a, it's a great offensive rebounding tactic. And it's worked very effectively thus far in the ballgame. Th this is a pretty good offensive rebounding team, Tennessee. And you really have to block them out, or they're going to get easy stickbacks on you. Foul number four on Chisholm. He's had a very lively second half to lead this comeback for Tennessee. So he's on the bench. Mason calling for some movement here. Here's Abrams again. He's missed the last two from way downtown. Another opening now for the Volunteers. Smith trying to make his move. In traffic, flips it up and gets it to go. What a difficult shot. Well, that's his game, taking the ball to the rim. And you can see Abrams having a tough time seeing over Cruz. Nearly turned over. Childress hits the deck. The ball loose, and they do turn it over. Smith up and in. And the foul. He'll go to the line. A.J. Abrams couldn't see in, and Childress able to get in front of the ball handler, James, and, well, I don't know about that one. That's, that's, these are some interesting charge block calls we've been seeing, but a terrific job by Ramar Smith. And Justin Ramar, Mason. Uh, Smith, Juwan Smith, excuse me. Justin Mason grabbed his fourth foul on that play, Jay, although a little controversial. It's a two-point lead for Texas. Well, you got to give all the credit, though, to Tennessee for putting Texas in the position to foul. You can moan about calls all you want and agree or disagree, but Tennessee's the aggressor, which is why they're getting the call. And their press has been suffocated. Shot clock at 14. Tennessee itching for another turnover. Mason down the lane. James got the position rebound. Abrams with it, four seconds to shoot. Look at the ball movement as Mason is fouled with three seconds left on the shot clock. And a foul against the Volunteers. You see the ball going inside to Mason. Must have been a little contact up top, and then Duke Cruz runs away in front of the official. Well, Bruce Pearl just loves Duke Cruz. He says he first spotted him at the Indianapolis Nike camp in 2005. Loves the way he plays, he says, with a huge chip on his shoulder. He said we needed that, that kind of a personality at Tennessee. Well, he likes tough kids, and he's recruited a bunch of tough ones, and they're showing a lot of toughness in this second half to make this comeback. Look at the turnovers, Texas, six of them. In the second half, just four in the first 20 minutes. And they've been, a few of them have been live ball turnovers where Tennessee's been able to take it the other way. Good job by Ashley. Tapped it out to the backcourt. Smith retrieves it. That's how you get out into a passing lane. Even when you're not the greatest athlete, you don't need to be some speed merchant to get a hand out into the passing lane. Well, you got to know Chris Lofton wants the ball to shoot it. He pulls up. Can't get it to go. James with the spinning rebound. Got to give Ashley credit for that miss. He really came out with those long arms. Second leading shot blocker in this team. He challenged that shot. Abrams around and out. Rebound is tipped up and in. James down the paint. Damian James has been an absolute workhorse in this game. Not only on the defensive glass, but going after offensive rebounds, blocking shots. He's been a presence. James, another one of those gifted freshmen for Texas, a parade All-American, Gatorade Player of the Year in Texas, has great hops. Originally signed with Oklahoma. And again, Tennessee with terrific ball movement to get the easy basket by Childress. 73 to 69. Great job by Texas there after the made basket to get the ball in quickly. That's one of the ways to beat a press is inbounded fast. 
the crowd rumbling here. The slip by Abrams able to maintain that dribble. Mason all the way through down the lane, but that's going to be a charge. An offensive foul against Texas as Childress hung in there. And that's going to be five on Mason. He has fouled out. Rick Barnes has lost a key man who exits with 15 points. And this one's getting good. Texas on top, 73 to 69, 703 left. Was this a foul? Probably. When you're driving this far away from the basket, the key is whether he got in position before he left the floor. You know, I thought he put a little too much into it, but still, that was a great play by Childress. You know, Rick Barnes was talking to the officials afterwards saying, listen, when Juwan Smith went to the basket, Mason was the guy that was set. It was the same play, and he called two different ways. Great backdoor cut. And got it to go. He'll go to the line. Boy, that was a great call by Bruce Pearl out of the timeout. Isolated the side, got Chris Lofton out, and then as soon as the defense got over the top, he backdoored it. That was a beautifully run play. And actually with the foul to send Lofton to the free throw line here. The opportunity to cut it to one. 73 to 72. Tennessee almost all the way back from a 15 point halftime deficit. Actually ahead to James. And Texas breaks the pressure. Justin Mason has fouled out though for Texas. A big loss. Abrams one hands it up and it rolls in for him. Boy, he's been big in the second half. Oh, what a pretty shot off the drive using the left hand, the soft shot. He's really trying to take over and show some leadership in the second half. All 11 of his points in the second half, and Lewis with a foul as he bumps up against Lofton here with 625 left. And the wrong man for Texas to be sending to the line. Lofton, one of the great shooters in the country. I mean, any conversation about the top four or five pure shooters in America at the collegiate level will have Lofton's picture in it. Well, I think he's the top shooter. I, I put some other guys up there. Blake Ahern of uh, Missouri State, I think, is up there. J.C. Carroll from Utah State. I'd also put uh, Jamar Smith of Illinois, even though he's been hurt throughout the season, uh, as one of the one of the four or five best shooters in America without question. Lofton makes them both. It's a one-point lead again for Texas. Here comes the volunteer pressure. Been very effective in the second half, although Abrams breaks it on the dribble. Batter up top to Ashley. Here's James with the spin shot. Can't get it to go. He's got to get something going to the basket there. He had a smaller defender on him. Tennessee has not led since they had the advantage at 11 to 10 in the opening minutes of the first half. Lofton fires around and out. And a foul in the rebounding fray will go against Tennessee and Ryan Childress. Boy, a great blockout. Not good, but great by Connor Atchley. He's the guy that got that foul on Childress because he made contact with him first and boxed him out. Childress with his third. Durant still on the bench for Texas with four personal fouls. When do you bring him back in, Jay? Well, I, when you lose the lead. I mean, you can bring him back in under five minutes, but I don't think you want to risk it right now when it's this chaotic on the floor. Well, it actually has been terrific his last three games. Last three games averaging over nine points per game after struggling a little bit out of the gate. But he's got the opportunity for this team to be a really good player. He can shoot it, he can pick and pop, and he blocks shots and rebounds. Excellent shooting touch. 77 to 74. You see Texas has shot the ball very well at the foul line. Just getting inside of Cruz. And walking with it, a traveling violation. Tennessee's done such a good job of not doing that in the second half. That is their first turnover. Well, a tough play. He tried to gather himself after catching the ball off that lob pass over the top. Just shuffled his feet a bit. A three-point lead for the Longhorns. Fires. 
With the miss, it's actually, though, the big rebound and a new shot clock here for Texas. And they need to use it. Wider does not, does not win, banks it up and in instead on a hard drive to the bucket. Smith got tied up. He got fouled before the shot with 5.15 remaining. It's really quieted down here over the last couple of minutes, but I think most of this crowd of about 20,000 has to be exhausted after all the energy it took for Tennessee down 15 and a half to cut the lead on a couple of occasions down to one point. And, and you're exactly right. That's the danger when you get down that much in the first half. When you make your comeback, you have to expend so much energy to do it. And sometimes when, the, when you get back to taking the lead or close to taking the lead, that's when it energizes the other team. But then if Tennessee were to take the lead here uh, in, in, you know, with a, four minutes to go, that, then all of a sudden Texas might start playing a little bit better. They'd get a second win because all of a sudden they're down now. They're not trying to protect anything. They're really trying to win the game. Lofton on the drive. Tough bank shot. He draws contact and is fouled. Texas on top by four actually picks up his fifth so he has filed out with six points and four boards and we want to apologize for the audio difficulties that just blew our headsets off a couple of moments ago but you'll be glad to know we've recovered Lofton at the line here and such a sweet touch he has another one coming a three-point lead for the Longhorns. And all of a sudden, Texas has not only gotten smaller with Ashley off the floor, they've gotten a lot younger. That one rattles out. Texas controlling the rebound. And Texas now needs to do their best to control the tempo. Abrams around the screen, set by Hill. Abrams has been the hot hand in the second half for Texas. He hit his first three points, three point shots in the second 20 minutes. Here's Lewis with a catch and shoot. Off to the right. Cruz knocking down Lewis after the shot. No foul call there. And Tennessee with a chance to tie on a three. Awfully difficult shot. Here comes Durant back in. Line of picking clean. Chris Lofton. And Durant ready to report back in. Lewis. Bodied up, then he is fouled on the play with 4.17 to go. Well, it's going to be so important as Kevin Durant comes back into the ball game with just over four minutes to go for each of these teams when they get the opportunity to step to the free throw line that they knock down their free throws. That's what's going to win this game. Being strong with the ball, not turning it over, getting a good shot and running good offense, and stepping to the line and knocking down big free throws. Lewis with the free throw to make it 80 to 76. Jawan Smith back in for Tennessee. Lofton will take a seat. How impressive for Lewis to come into this ball game after not having played a bunch this year. And taking Chris Lofton, knocking down some big free throws. He has really played some really important minutes in this ball game. He, he's been a big factor in the second half for Texas, keeping them ahead. He comes out for the moment. DJ Augustine back in running the point for Texas. Tennessee with the ball. Texas going to a zone. A little 1 2 2 look. They're trying to widen it out on the wings, make sure they get out the shooters. It's as if the volunteers are catching their breath here. Smith will fly. James controlling the rebound along that baseline. Kept himself from sailing out of bounds as well. Less than four minutes to go. Durant back in, spins right. Off the glass and in. Oh, so silky smooth to move to his left, spin back around. Well, he had been out for about six and a half minutes because of those fouls. But now has 21 points. Pat very tough move underneath to lay it up and in for Tennessee. Tennessee really needs to attack Kevin Durant up at the top, see if they can get him to reach. He looks like he wants to reach. 
And they can pick up a cheap foul, get him out of the ballgame. Here's Abrams, the tab out on him. Now Durant's got Juwan Smith on him. That's a mismatch. Augustine, last up of that shot clock, now 15. Durant again, working on the shorter Smith. Shot clock at six. Augustine will shoot with a screen and can't get it. Here's Smith attacking the basket. But that's going to be an offensive foul. 3.08 remaining. And down the stretch we come with Texas in the lead getting tense. Both coaches showing some of that stress. Rick Barnes and Bruce Pearl. John Shami, thank you very much. Holiday Hoops continues, and today in our early tilt, we come to you from Thompson Bowling Arena in Knoxville, Tennessee. Dave O'Brien along with Jay Billis. Tightening up here down the stretch, 83-78. Texas hanging on to that lead, although it was at 15 points at halftime. We look at the foul trouble. Mason and actually already out, and Durant, more importantly than anybody, with four personal fouls. Yeah, very important for Kevin Durant to be smart coming down the stretch. You don't want to get a, a cheap charging foul, and you also don't want to get a cheap reach or an over the back. He's got to be solid, play big, but not, not make a stupid foul. So his ninth career game with 20 points or more. This, by the way, is his 11th career game. And he has become a star in his freshman season. At Texas, 83-78, the Longhorns with the advantage and the ball. Texas can afford to burn a little clock. The jump shot from the corner again on a money by Abrams, who has been the dagger in the hearts in the second half. And Lofton trying to return it, but can't. Moves so well without the ball. The lead back up to a comfort zone here for the Longhorns. Texas showing a lot of poise in the second half because this has been a big time comeback. Bad shot. Durant off the mark. 225 left. Quick strike for Tennessee as Cruz lays it in. How often do you see that, Dave? A bad shot on one end leads to a layup on the other. And the clock right now is Texas's friend, and they take a quick shot. And that's youth showing up on the road. Texas really spreading things out here as we come up on two minutes remaining. Durant attacking that glass, flips it up Hill. And he's fouled on the play as he tried to return it with 1.57 to go. Matt Hill, a really good offensive rebounder. In fact, coming into this ball game, he had more offensive rebounds than defensive, and he's been fighting a little bit of a, a stomach virus. Been ill lately, but. He's getting to be better and better. He was recruited coming out of Nebraska by the Cornhuskers, also by Creighton. But Gonzaga got in on him late and really made a push for him. I think with that hairdo, he would have fit in really well with his ass. <laughs> Very comfortable indeed. Nebraska's Mr. Basketball is a senior out of Lincoln Southeast High School. His first point of the day. Short on that effort. Tennessee to push the tempo. Lamar Smith nearly lost his dribble. It's Lofton to catch and shoot it. And when he misses from beyond the three-point line, but there's the guy working the hardest today, Duke Cruz. And an underneath that basket for two to make it 87 to 82. And Tennessee knocked the ball away after that basket, and it cost them some seconds. That didn't hurt Texas, it hurt Tennessee. with 14 points and six rebounds out to guard Durant here. Durant trying to go all the way in and it's Cruz with the block. Got it cleanly. Oh, what a great play by Duke Cruz. Smith flips it to Jawan Smith. Lofton shoots. Got it. Here's three on the money. It's a two-point lead for Texas. One minute to go. Lofton with 25 and 11 rebounds. on the drive 
It won't roll in for him. And a rebound comes to Cruz. That was too early to take that shot. 38 seconds left. Smith had to alter his shot. Ramar Smith. Now to Lofton. He's the man Tennessee wants with the ball here. Here comes the high screen. Lofton directing traffic. Durant out to guard him. Look at this long range shot. Oh, got it! I can't believe he hit that! Tennessee with the lead! Texas not going to call a timeout. They don't want to go against... There it is. They called the timeout. They didn't want to go against the set defense at first, but Rick Barnes didn't like what he saw. An incredible jump shot by Chris Lofton. Way downtown. And Tennessee leads by one. Goodness gracious, Tennessee with a first lead since the score was 11 to 10. Look at this one from Lofton. Well, his last two shots. And both of them over Kevin Durant, pulling the trigger over the 6'10 guy with a 7'5 wingspan. And this one was from the parking lot. Neither one of them touched the rim. That's about a 27-footer with Durant up in his grill. PlayStation game track second half field goals with Tennessee has shot very well turnovers have been a huge part of the story that made 16 points off of Texas turnovers so here we go with 11.4 seconds left Texas in a position they have been in very very infrequently today behind on the scoreboard Tennessee's got to watch out for a ball screen and a pick and pop opportunity. They also have to do a really good job on the defensive glass. Augustine trying to get it in, having trouble. Five second violation. Did not get the timeout. Tennessee's defensive pressure works another miracle. Now take a look at this. That's a five man. This is unusual to have a guy this size. This is like their press out of bounds underneath to go the whole court. And DJ Augustine couldn't see anything. Now remember, that's a spot throw and he can't move. That's that's great coaching on the part of Bruce Pearl. Hey, he does that from time to time and basically has he puts a big guy on the ball so they can't see in and really takes away vision. And everybody did a pretty good job of guarding, but Damian James was open. It's just that Augustine couldn't see him. So we reset it now. Tennessee with three timeouts remaining. Texas does not have any timeouts left. They do have the possession arrow. Tennessee with the ball leading by one. And now we'll try and check it in against the Texas pressure. 88 to 87. What a comeback for Pearl and Tennessee here in the second half. They were down 15. If you don't get a steal, you can foul right away. Smith is indeed hit and fouled with nine seconds left. And coming up next at 210, more college basketball. Holiday Hoops presented by K Jewelers. They'll tip off any moment. Miami and Louisville still to come on ESPN. But what a way to get started here this afternoon from Knoxville. And what has been an absolute barn burner since halftime. Lamar Smith, a 69% free throw shooter. But even if he knocks in both, Texas is going to have an opportunity on the other end. This is where free throw blockouts are a major factor. But Smith, the freshman from Mount Clemens, Michigan, very cool at the line with the first one. Dave, this is where Rick Barnes, if this goes in or doesn't, he doesn't like calling timeouts in a late game situation like this because he doesn't want to allow the opponent to set their defense. Now right now, it doesn't, I'm not sure he has any timeouts left anyway, but it, he normally wouldn't. He has none. So Smith with another one coming with 9.1 seconds left. Missed the second one, a two-point lead. You can get all the way to the rim. Four seconds left. It's Durant leaning in, banked it in! He made the shot! One second left. Smith with the heave from deep. And we're going overtime. 
Boy, what a great job by Kevin Durant to recognize the situation. He only needed a two, took it to the basket. What an amazing play and an outstanding young player. And Bruce Pearl realizes he let one get away. 89-89. Get another towel for the coach. We're going to overtime. So if he had any doubts at all that Kevin Durant, just a freshman, is not a big-time player. I think that last basket put an end to that. Texas and Tennessee tied at 89. Well, Ramar Smith misses the free throw, and James gets it immediately. They bring it up and get it right to Durant. Now, you're down two. You can take it all the way to the rim, and he does a very nice job of kissing that off the glass. And one thing it shows you, Dave, you know, Kevin Durant is a superstar. And he wants the ball at the end of a ball game. I mean, that's a big factor for a player of his caliber that he is unafraid to be put in the position of taking the last shot and putting the game on his shoulders. So the two men we highlighted in Star Watch, Kevin Durant and Chris Lofton, have really lived up to that. Durant with 23 points and Lofton with 28. What a second half he's had. He's been he's been fantastic. And, and it's interesting. You know the, the amazing comeback by Tennessee you got to give them an enormous amount of credit you know they, they're in a better position in this overtime because they're playing against a younger team that's plagued with foul trouble they're already missing some of their uh, some of their regulars and th this is going to be a very difficult overtime period for a young Texas team on the road that's why Tennessee better be ready to come out swinging from the start because they don't want to start this overtime period behind so the first overtime of the season for Tennessee Texas defeated LSU ranked number nine in the country in overtime and Miami and Louisville have gotten underway we'll get you that game as soon as the overtime or overtimes are finished up here in Knoxville and we jump it it is a little bit antsy there's your score of Miami and Louisville in the upper right corner We'll keep you posted there, but this one's turned into a dandy, especially in the second half. As Tennessee was down 15 on their home court at the break and not looking like a team, frankly, that would stage a tremendous comeback. Got it away by Abrams. Shot clock down to 14. Lofton, will he stay hot? There's another one. Give him 31. Another Chris Lofton layup from 20 feet. <laughs> 7 out of 16 from three-point land. Texas with the answer. Augustine has really shaken off that cramping difficulty he had in the second half. He's a tough kid and a tough matchup because he's so explosive off the dribble. But going back to that zone, now they're going from a 2-3 to a 3-2 with Durant out top to use his length to try to bother Lofton. Cruz up top to Smith. They can get the ball inside and play inside out. This defensive collapse, they can kick it out to an open shooter. Shot clock at nine. Smith trying to feed underneath. There's Cruz with a stop. Tennessee's lead at three. And now it's the Longhorns playing from behind with 3.30 left in overtime. looking for his shot not this time but he's been so big in the second half for Texas Duke Cruz has done a really good job in this game he's made himself available on the offensive end doing a solid job on the glass and defensively Jism lines up a long one got it the crowd was groaning a little bit as he lined it up but not when it went through they were delighted, and it's a six-point lead for the Volunteers. James on the baseline will slam it down, and Texas with a big answer. Texas needs a stop right here. James with seven, but 13 rebounds for the freshman Damian James of Texas. What a workhorse he's been. Boy, win or lose. Both these teams have really grown up a lot in this ballgame. Flips it up and in on the finger roll. 
This matches the largest lead of the day for Tennessee. Abram stops, pops, and will just glance off the front rim. Too tough of a shot. Good job by Tennessee defensively, putting great pressure on the ball. Maybe some tired legs, too. Overtime field goals. Tennessee has yet to miss. Lofton. Boy, the crowd trying to get him to fire up another one from 27 feet. Like the one over Durant in the closing seconds of regulation. Inside, will not draw the contact. It comes back out to Ramar Smith. he get it to go. Tennessee's just quicker to the ball. It was their advantage going into the overtime, and they've taken advantage of it. Durant with a fadeaway three. Hill battling the rebound with Cruz. And a foul will go against Tennessee with 119 left in the overtime. I don't think there's any doubt this big crowd at Thompson Bowling Arena has energized a volunteer squad that worked so hard and expended so much of that gas tank just to get the lead in the closing moments of regulation. And they've done it really with their defense. I mean, obviously, they've hit shots and knocked big baskets down, but they gave up 50 in the first half, and it could have been more. And they've limited this Texas team in about almost 24 minutes of the second half in overtime to 43. Lynch isn't picking up his fifth, so he is fouled out. Cruz knocking that one right back out of bounds. Dave, you can't, you can't overstate how hard it is for Texas to get the ball in with a, with a five-man on him underneath. You got a six, you know, six, eight, six, nine guy with long arms that's guarding a guard and really making it hard for him to see in. Toss that one errantly. That's going to rattle in for Durant and a foul on the play as well. So no quit in Kevin Durant. He'll go to the line to try and complete a three-point play. Durant just around the basket going to the glass and Lewis was able to keep that ball alive and it just caromed to Durant who finished the play and got fouled. So all of a sudden he knocked this down. And he got a ball game again. And after all, Bruce Pearl did not lose Chisholm. He was not credited with his fifth foul. He reports back in, and Cruz will head to the bench now for the Volunteers with 1.14 remaining in overtime. And Durant's foul shot makes it 101 to 96. Texas forced to foul here. Lewis with the personal. And you see Louisville and Miami underway in the opening minutes of the first half in the upper right hand corner. We'll get you that game as soon as this one is over. On the topic of fouls and foul trouble, well, Mason and actually already out. Durant has been playing for long stretches before. And Durant has done a pretty good job of playing effectively without picking up that fifth foul. Remember, he came in with about, if I remember, right, about 417 left on the clock. And has played the remainder of the game without picking up his fifth. Jamar Smith with another one coming. He has 13 points. And really, with Dane Bradshaw on the bench for a big hunk of the tail end of this game, Tennessee able to stage a terrific comeback. And have scored 103 on Texas. At halftime, it was Texas on its way to 100. They had 50. Durant, too strong. Lewis battles for the rebound. He hits the deck, and he's fouled by Juwan Smith. Lewis just continuing to scrap out on the floor. He's really been a gamer in this ball game on the road. And Smith has fouled out 19 points however for Jawan Smith. And so many players were huge in the comeback for Tennessee Smith and Cruz and Chisholm. No one bigger of course than Chris Lofton. who buried one big shot after another. Lewis going to the line here. And I thought the big guys from Tennessee did a terrific job. Chisholm came in and Hit a couple big shots, made some big plays on both ends. But that, this is the kind of foul we just saw, Dave, that, that Tennessee doesn't want. I mean, you, you can quarrel over whether foul should have been called and all that, but you don't want to stop the clock 
and let Texas score with no time going off the clock because Tennessee's got a lead here. They want that clock to run. Lewis connects. 101 remaining in overtime. The first overtime, 103 97 Tennessee. Damian James, the freshman, back in for Texas. Got to have a good box out here because if it's missed, you know that Texas is going to try to tip it back out. Durant tried to tip it to keep that rebound alive, but over to Tennessee. Cruz bottled up on the baseline, flips it out to Lofton. They break the pressure. Chisholm able to lean in and get a big, big basket inside a minute to play in this overtime. 105 to 97. Well, a really good decision to attack with the advantage and a great pass by Lofton. Augustine around the screen. Texas doesn't have this much time. They got to go. He drew the contact and he'll go to the line as well. A great drive there by DJ Augustine. Who cramped up here in the second half, but he's shaking that off. Great drive and a really bad foul. Now he had the advantage in the angle. That's where Duke Cruz wants to just get out of the way. Stopping the clock and allowing him to get three instead of two is a bad play by Tennessee. Augustine at the line completes the three point play. And what that does, Dave, it allows Rick Barnes to substitute. So he gets his defense set now. Instead of it being a chaotic situation, now it's a set situation that's going to give Tennessee a little more of a problem. Tennessee up by five and a timeout. Volunteers with 36.6 seconds remaining in the overtime. Right now, we'll toss it back to Scott Reese in the studio. Scott. All right, Dave. Well, those of you expecting to see Miami and Louisville, they are underway. And the Cardinals really struggling from the perimeter of the last three games, but not today. Jerry Smith knocks it down and a big early lead, 11 to 2, under 14 to go in the first half. We'll get you out to that game as soon as we're done in Tennessee, guys. Scott, thank you very much. Tennessee with the ball here, taking a timeout just moments ago. No timeouts for Chris Lofton in the second half. He has been brilliant. He has poured in a total of 31 points, attempting 24 shots, making seven three pointers. Dave, there's nowhere on the floor where you're safe playing off of Chris Lofton because he can pull up and drill it right in your face. Put the ball on the floor, attack off the dribble. He's got a good one dribble pull up, a step back move. I mean, he is really maturing, not, not only into a great shooter. I think we almost limit him when we talk about what a great shooter is. He, he's maturing into a great player. Lofton, the one who hit the game-winning shot to beat upset-minded Winthrop with 2.9 seconds left in Tennessee's win in the first round of the NCAA tournament last season. He hit a school record nine three-pointers to single-handedly beat Georgia in Athens last season. And was a first team all SEC last year, according to the Associated Press. He's showing exactly why with a terrific performance. And not only the 31 points, he has 10 rebounds. Yeah, he's been great. And over his last five games, he's been outstanding. And over his last five, he's averaging, what, 27 points per game on 54% from three. He got a slow start to the season. But he is really picking it up. And he has been, without question, a player of the year candidate. And his jump shot. At the tail end of regulation from about 26 27 feet over Durant who is 6 9 6 10 gave Tennessee their first lead it was 88 87 after it went through the net since that, it was 11 to 10 and that was stunning just took your breath away the way he shot that ball and the, how deep it was so Tennessee to check in here and Bruce Pearl what a what a second half the coach of the volunteers has had to bring his team back from 15. Constant pressure on Texas. Lamar Smith is fouled on that effort with 35.8 left, and he'll be shooting. So Abrams picks up the personal, and hoping Smith will miss at the line here. Still time for Texas. There's plenty of time. That's a great point. I mean, with almost 36 seconds to go, if you get down, get a a quick score it doesn't even have to be a three you'd prefer it if you can but if you get to the basket you're more likely to collapse the defense and kick it out to an open three point shooter for a guy stepping into his shot instead of a challenge one but you can extend this game. 
Smith a decent foul shooter at 69 percent but he is now seven out of ten in this contest from the line. This has been a really gutsy performance by this Tennessee team in the second half. You know, a lot of teams would have packed it in being down 15 at halftime. Smith missing his first foul shot in the overtime on three out of four six point lead for the volunteers. Abrams a three on the way got it. Time out. And a three point lead for the volunteers now Texas takes the timeout with 28 seconds remaining. Well you talk about the importance of hitting free throws that's why. The missed free throw all of a sudden you've got a situation where you're coming against a defense that's not set the little dribble handoff and Lofton not able to get any pressure on that A.J. Abrams shot. Abrams really sets his feet very well even off the move. You can see the dribble handoff and kind of a brush screen. You know when you can hand it off and then sort of get your body in front of the defender of the guy you're handing off to that's that's really essentially a screen. On the brink of history coach Bobby Knight and a look at the Texas Tech schedule as he bears down on the all time men's victory top notch and today it's against Bucknell and ESPN 2. That's at 430 on December 28th against UNLV looking to tie Dean Smith today with a victory over Bucknell and then break the record. That's the master plan against UNLV just three days after Christmas. But none of those three games are gimmies. I mean New Mexico just beat Wichita State last night. And remember Wichita State didn't have P.J. Kuznar probably one of their best players along with Kyle Wilson. Now they touch his foul immediately. They sure will. Minder on Lofton with 27.7 to go in the overtime. Well, the last guy they wanted to foul but once the ball's inbounded you don't have any choice. Lofton has been close to automatic at the foul line eight out of nine today from the stripe. This is unusual. Usually you don't have a shooter that goes up and toes the line right away. They wait until they get the ball to do it. But Lofton. Well he's so good not only from the line but from the field and so confident. All those shooters out of Kentucky seem to be right out of Maysville Kentucky the junior. Right now leading the Southeastern Conference and scoring at 21 points per game. And Today will certainly bump up that average. You know, who's also from Mansfield, Kentucky, is George Clooney. And right now, to Bruce Pearl, Chris Lofton is a lot better looking than <laughs> George Clooney is. Timeout. Tennessee. 108 to 103. What's the game plan now for Rick Barnes here? with less than half minute to go in overtime and trailing by five. Well I, th I think you have to start thinking about looking for threes but there's still a lot of time you can still extend this game and I, I still like the idea of getting to the rim because oftentimes what will happen is instinctively players will come off of their man outside of the three point line to help off on a drive and you can wind up getting a really good three point shot off the penetration. Uh, it can come off of a ball screen a pick and pop situation. But the one thing Tennessee cannot do right now is foul. I mean, even if you're going to give up an easy two because you're caught out of position somehow, you cannot foul. Well, it's been a raucous afternoon, particularly the second half here inside Thompson Bowling Arena in Knoxville, Tennessee, Texas, and Tennessee with some high octane basketball. Dave O'Brien and Jay Billis with you down the stretch in regulation. I mean, it was dizzy. One great shot after another. Here's Augustine. Trying to take it himself. Held up and fouled by Tab before he could get off a shot. And that stops the clock. This is how he got to overtime in the second half. Chris Lofton. Look at this shot over Durant. Can you still believe it? We've seen it five times. Well, Durant gets his arms up late. He needed to have it up earlier. But Kevin Durant down two. Finds his way off that little dribble handoff to get to the rim and knock that shot in off the glass to tie it. Augustine. 108 to 104. Durant will take a seat on the bench for Texas. Winder back in. And Durant is out because Rick Barnes doesn't want to risk him getting a foul if the ball is inbounded quickly. Augustine very cool at the line cuts it to three Texas looking for the turnover here Lofton 
to Bradshaw. Smith, and he's fouled right at midfoot by Augustine. Now they gave up a, a few extra seconds because they didn't foul right away, but I think Texas was better off sending Ramar Smith to the free throw line and giving up a few seconds rather than sending Lofton there to knock down two. I mean, at least with Smith there, Texas thinks maybe we got a chance to miss one with, <laughs> you know, it's almost like an intentional walk with uh, with Lofton going up there. You know, it's very rare you're going to throw one to the backstop. He's going to make them. Ramar Smith to the line has 15 points. He's 7 out of 11 at the line today. That one's going to roll off. Find out in a moment just how big that is. He's made three out of five in the overtime. Durant's back in. Lining up in the lane here for Texas. Smith with another one. Got that one. It's a four point advantage again. Augustine has to hustle now. The fire from deep on the wing, no good by Abrams, rebounded by Lofton, and that might do it with 6.8 seconds remaining and a four-point Tennessee lead. And Texas got a good look. They've been running that little dribble handoff on the right side, and Abrams was able to free himself with a little fade into the corner and got a good look at it. Lofton is 10 out of 11 at the line today. And has 33 points to lead all scorers. He only had eight at halftime. And that one will roll in for him. It just goes to show you what they all say about great shooters. It's kind of like the weather in New England. If you don't like it, wait a minute. Things are going to change. And Lofton certainly changed everything for Tennessee in the second half of the overtime. An amazing performance by Tennessee in the second half but most especially by Chris Lofton what a player a career high 35 points for Chris Lofton final seconds here in overtime Augustine to launch and that'll do it what a come from behind victory for Tennessee Lofton celebrates with 35 points, a new career high. I still can't believe that shot he hit over Kevin Durant to give Tennessee the lead in the waning seconds of regulation. Tennessee, buoyed by that, goes on to win a thriller by a final score of 111 to 105 over Texas. For Jay Billis, I'm Dave O'Brien. Thank you so much for joining us.